in history if we had a group like these. Trevor Lawrence has had this night in his sights since he was 15 years old. He is in South Carolina tonight waiting to hear his name called. Justin Fields is in Georgia waiting to hear his name with his family around him. We'll see how long that wait turns out to be. And then rounding out the big five, there's Zach Wilson from BYU. We expect his name to be the second call tonight. And then the big mystery of the night. At number three, will it be Mac Jones from Alabama? Or will it be Trey Lance, one of the most intriguing prospects in the history of the National Football League draft? What a night. And players all around the country are with us tonight tonight as they look on and we will have virtual looks at their evenings tonight throughout as we go here they come many players tonight across the country and we wish them nothing but the best of luck tonight we are also in a great many of the draft rooms tonight all 32 of them as a matter of fact including that one the first one the jacksonville jaguars will be on the clock in just a matter of moments with their new head coach urban meyer and with that we welcome you inside the theater and we are delighted to have you i'm greeny it is a thrill for me to be here and to be with lewis riddick and booger mcfarland and then the man who invented the draft, <laughs> which is Mel Kuyper. And Mel, I will start with you. In August, you were on Get Up With Me, and you used one word to describe this draft. What was that word? Mysterious, Greeny, and we're on our way to getting the mystery solved very quickly. But we're going to see some trades, and I want to see that feeding frenzy. We're going to have quarterbacks go one, two, three. But there's going to be two of the big five at quarterbacks still standing. Who's going to go up and get them? Will they wait for them to fall in their lap? What happens? The intrigue now is about those two remaining quarterbacks of the big five. And Lewis, for a million different reasons, the process this year has been so different from normal. How will that impact what we see tonight? I think you're going to wind up seeing a bunch of surprises. And I know that may sound cliche, but it's true in this draft, Greeny. I think you're going to see some players that maybe we talked about for the past couple of months as being guys who maybe teams had ranked very highly on their board. That quite honestly weren't that high. And some people who didn't get a whole lot of attention who wind up going tonight and you're going, oh, wow, I didn't expect that one. Why is that? Because of the gaps in information, the kind of like the, the kind of like no-fly zones where people don't really know what's really going on with some of these guys. So what are they going to do? They're going to err on the side of caution. They're going to err on the side of more information over less information, especially if there's a tie between guys. So I think we got to re really be ready to go ahead and expect some things that really catch us off guard. And Booger, what are you keeping your eye most closely on as we get this started tonight? Well, Green, it's really simple. Which general managers are going to select players and select talent? And which general managers are going to team build? Especially number four, when you get to Atlanta, are you going to stay with Matt Ryan? Are you going to take the best player available? Maybe if it's Kyle Pitts, do you change the quarterback? And Cincinnati at five. Does Cincinnati dare commit malpractice and take a wide receiver before they draft the left tackle after their quarterback got hurt last year? A lot of intrigue, and it's going to happen early. Yeah, we think we know what's happening at one and two. Three, four, and five are what will decide what the rest of our night looks like. Also, we spoke earlier tonight with Commissioner Roger Goodell about the safety protocol. There you go. Come on. <laughs> Welcome to the 2021 NFL Draft. Come on. Come on, Cleveland. I didn't come out of my basement for nothing. Let's go. Come on. As you can see, I have a few friends here with me. Let me introduce them, even though they don't need to be introduced to Brownie fans. First, Jarvis Landry. Bernie Kozar. And Big Joe Thomas. We all agree that over the past season, one thing that we miss the most was all our fans, all of you. And we can't wait. Bernie. Take a bow, Bernie. And we can't wait to have all of you back First Energy Stadium and every stadium across the league this season. Yeah. 
So tonight, to celebrate our fans, we're going to have an NFL fan from out here that's backstage come up to this stage for each draft pick tonight and sit in that chair, which is a chair I did the draft from in 2020. So I'm going to let Jarvis and Bernie pick the Jaguar fan who comes up first. Guys, go for it. All right, we got a winner. We got a winner. Hang on one second, because I'm going to ask Joe Thomas to give his little pregame speech to get you a little fired up before we start tonight. So, Big Joe. What's up, Cleveland? How about them brownies, huh? Here we go, brownies. Here we go. Here we go, brownies. Here we go. How about this night, Cleveland? Let's get this draft started. Okay, Cleveland. It's time to get this rolling. You ready? Okay. The 2021 NFL Draft is now officially open. The team just wasn't good enough. And I think when you look at Trevor moving forward, he's going to be asked because Urban Meyer took this job because he was going to be guaranteed to be a Jaguar. Jimmy Johnson, who was his quarterback right away, who was Troy Aikman. Resulted in Super Bowls for both. I think when you look at Trevor Lawrence and Urban Meyer together, that tandem, Jaguar fans hope it basically follows in the footsteps of Jimmy and Troy and the Cowboys and win some Super Bowls. And so, Booger, what is the single most important thing they have to do right immediately for Trevor to succeed? They better protect him, Greeny, because we've seen David Carr, former number one overall pick, got hit too much and got sacked and he was ruined. Next thing they better do is minimize what he doesn't do well. He doesn't need to become a drop back passer. Use his strength, get him outside the pocket, play action pass. They better major in some RPOs. They better major in the run game. Don't allow this kid to drop back and throw the football 35 or 40 times. But when you're constructing a team and you're talking about a rookie quarterback, it's also about team building. So their defense has to be better if you want this kid to play. Their defense was at or near the bottom against the run. They were 31st in time of possession. So if you want your young quarterback to play, you got to get the ball back. That means your defense can't be on the field. They got a first-year defensive coordinator in Joe Cullen. They got to fix the defense to allow this young rookie to develop. If they do that, he'll get out for time and he'll make the mistakes and he'll correct them and he'll be better off in the end. Lewis, how about the marriage with Urban Meyer and that offense he runs? Look, I think right away, you have to take a look at, if you're Urban Meyer, right away, you have to take a look at what was it that Trevor did at Clemson that really helped him be successful, and you marry it with what you philosophically believe in, and quite honestly, it's, a, it's the exact same ball handling. Urban Meyer's already done it, yeah. Trevor's done it, that's what, they, that's what you need to see when they take the field in 2021. Yeah. Well, the great Susie Culver is with us tonight. She'll be interviewing the players as they are being drafted. But Susie, I know you had a chance to talk with Urban as well. What did he say? Yeah, and I checked in with him again just a little while ago. His feeling right now, he said, is overwhelming relief. After all, his love affair with Lawrence started two years ago. First time he saw him play in person. He was so impressed with his size and then his toughness. He saw him get speared, fight to come back in, rally his team to a win. He saw how his teammates respected him. That, he said, was seared in his soul. Now, with all that said, they still did their due diligence on three quarterbacks, but once they were sure Trevor was their guy, they went from indoctrination into actual installation. They have been installing the Jags offense with Trevor Lawrence since February. Once they got through the five Zooms, then everything has been on the phone, nothing in person, so it's all been by the book. Now, all that said, Meyer said it doesn't guarantee that Lawrence will be the day one starter. He doesn't believe in throwing a young quarterback to the Wolves. He watched what happened with Alex Smith, number one overall in 2005. Remember, he coached him at Utah. They talked almost every week. Smith got beat up in almost every imaginable way. He said that really scarred him as a coach. He will never let that happen to a young quarterback again. 
Adam? Well, Susie, Trevor Lawrence wore number 16 at Clemson to honor his mother's favorite college player, Peyton Manning. And earlier this month at the Masters, Peyton Manning had a chance to bump into Trevor Lawrence, and they had a conversation in which Peyton Manning told Trevor Lawrence that the Jaguars head coach, Urban Meyer, needed to play him every play of every game so that he could break Peyton Manning's record. His record for most interceptions by a rookie, 28. So Peyton Manning is pulling for Trevor Lawrence to break that record, and he told him that much at the Masters this month, Brady. It's a, such a funny story, and here, take a look at those jerseys, by the way, growing up, you will see it. And look at that, there he is, he's got the, the Tennessee jersey on there. But you know, Booger, you made a good point when you and I were talking yesterday, that there are similarities beyond this. All the expectations on Peyton, and he exceeded them. And Trevor Lawrence has done the same to this point. Greeny, I can't think of a lot of people that have had the expectations at such a young age that, they, that those two had, and they've met or exceeded all those expectations. So there's no doubt, even though there's great expectations in Jacksonville, he will have every chance to succeed down there. Yeah, and so as you can see on your screen, the pick is in, and I'm told the commissioner will be coming out to announce it shortly. It is a moment that we have all known was coming for quite some time. Again, tonight is a night that is going to change dramatically after pick number two. This is something of a coronation for Trevor Lawrence yeah. here, and we have a, quite a good idea where the New York Jets will go after that. And then at, but once we get to San Francisco at three and Atlanta at four, the tone of the night will change. But in Jacksonville, they are excited. Urban Meyer made this decision just to come back and coach this player. And so let us watch a new era of pro football begin in Jacksonville. One of the most highly decorated college quarterbacks of all time. One of the most anticipated college quarterbacks of all time on his way to the NFL. And Roger Goodell on his way to the microphone where he will announce the pick. The Jaguars are ready to go. The fan is in the easy chair. And Roger Goodell is ready to announce the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Here we go. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. <laughs> Again, it was much more of a coronation than a competition for Trevor Lawrence. And still the moment has to be overwhelming. He is in Seneca, South Carolina, seven miles from the campus of Clemson University, where he became a legend. And now one of the great college quarterbacks ever, and one of the great college coaches ever, take their talents to the NFL together. It should be fascinating to watch. A new era in Jacksonville begins. All right, next up, the J-E-T-S 